Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Ecostructural Machine Expert Training. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video what we're going to see is how we can download an application to our Modicon M262 via USB cable. So, let's go to the presentation. So, the first thing that we need in order to download an application, okay, to the M262, is to have the machine expert and to have the machine expert we must download from our website the software schneider electric software installer once we select the software installer it is important that we must select on the features okay this one that is the machine commissioning and maintenance because this one has the tools that allows us to have the firmware and also the gateway that allows us to connect with the device okay so that's uh, the important thing. Now, when we connect the USB cable that I'm going to show you right now, okay, when we have the USB cable that I have it over here, this one, okay. So when we plug in into this, uh, going to remove the USB cable so I can show you, uh, we should be able to see a new interface in our panel, control panel. So. just to show you that i'm not lying to you okay let's just open the control panel control panel on the other windows my name okay just hold on there we go so we just need to go to network and sharing okay and if we go to change adapter settings we just need to see all our uh, network. So now what I'm going to do is to connect the USB. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, the USB into the USB port of our M262. Okay. So now it's connected and everything as well. We should be able to see this, uh, this connection. Okay. So if I'm not wrong, okay. By default, we should be able to have this connection with this configuration, as I show you in the presentation. Okay, so this will allow us to connect with the uh, with the controller in our software. Okay, so one important thing is that if we are using this communication, oops, uh, if we're using this communication, okay, it it means that the controller on the other side will have an AP address. So on the M262 will be the same, but with the number one at the end. So right now, the same as you show you in there, the same as this one. So right now, if we are connected with this, we should be able to pin that IP address. So pin 192.168.200.1. one. You can see there is some ping and there is some uh, answer from the PLC. So if we continue with this. Now that we now that we are trying to communicate with the controller, okay, it's important to know that we can change the actual Ethernet configurations on the controller. Okay, so if we go to the software, this is the software. Okay, it's just read it. So all these connections. If you go into the um, new view in the device tree, as you can see over here, let me just adjust the view in the window so you can see everything from here. So if you change the, the view this to the new one, uh, you have the device tree. Okay, in the device tree, you can see the Ethernet port for the PLC, Ethernet one, which is in the top, and the other two ports, which is the Ethernet port two. So we can change this, okay, so when we download the application using the USB, we can connect over Ethernet with the new uh, Ethernet configuration that we have. And inside here, you have different. You have DHCP, would be, or fixed IP address, which is the one that I'm using right now. The other IP address that you can probably change is this one, which is the com, uh, the com bus for the TMS. So you can change this one. To remember that these uh, these networks must be different between the different ports so you need to be careful to not assign the same one for example i cannot use here the number one because otherwise we match with this one in the internet port two so that's something that you need to be aware of 
I'm going to save this and go to my controller. There we go. So we had the possibility to change the IP address of our, our port. So then after the download of the USB, we can connect using the Ethernet port. So if we want to make the communication and we don't see the controller on the list, which is the same situation that I have, okay, we just need to go to the my controller and change the connection mode that we have. Okay, let me just change the view to this one for this one for the IP address fast TCP. And then use the default IP address that we have for the USB port, which is which is the one that I mentioned over here should be this one okay this over here and the two and the one at the end okay so if we add this we should be able to add our controller on the list and if we don't have the certificate you should be able to see this and you need to trust it so I believe if I'm not wrong when I was doing this I have already trusted so um, it should I wish I shouldn't have that message now. So I'm going to try to connect using the IP address fast TCP test. In this case, I have already uh, I have already uh, created some users. Okay, administrator, administrator. Okay, and then you should be able to see the device over here. Okay. Let's try to do something I have in here. Let me just do something here. I'm going to power off the controller and unload the pin more so you can see the real process if you are uh, if you have a new PLC what you should be able to see on your side. Okay, so let's just wait for the firmware to be changed over here okay just bear with me a few seconds okay just wait okay it's flashing yes it's flashing so it means that it's in progress i don't know if you can see it but it should be doing something okay you can see there it's flashing with the sd card Okay, and it's finished. So now it's going to remove it. And after removing, we will start automatically. Oh, it might actually remove it. There we go. So let's wait for this to boot up, and then we should be able to add the connection once again. And you should be able to see more information about the connection, probably the certificates and everything. So you can see how should be a brand new controller when we want to connect so i'm going to use the I'm going to connect the uh, usb again once again now i'm going to add this let's see if i have the connection just wait for this bear with me a second okay Let's try again. Probably just finished to this to boot up. <laughs> okay. Let's try and see if I can ping it. Okay. So let's try to test the connection once again. Connection succeed. Good. Double click over there and then just log in. Alt F. The user management, as you can see, there uh, there is nothing on the controller. We just need to, yes, administrator. I'm going to define administrator, administrator, and the default administrator. Okay. So now I need to log in. Administrator, administrator. So this should be the behavior. Uh, that you may have on your controller. The only difference will be the credentials and how ready uh, validate that in my laptop. Now it's downloading the application and the application is already on the controller. You can see now just in run. Okay, and you can see all the diagnostics of the internet port and, and everything. 
once you are connected with the controller probably the main thing that you need to do is to go to service read the actual time of the controller and if it's different which has synchronized with local time or write the new value that you want so probably this would be the best thing that you can do so let's try to see if i forget about something this is probably something that you may have is a new controller okay then that have already explained this part okay let me just change the view to this one okay we have already seen this connection how to add the connection okay using the ip address for tcp and the default ip address for the usb port when it's finished test double click on it login okay and we can start the application so we can start application using this login or this icon over here and then start and then if you want to disconnect from the controller you just you can remove the usb but probably it's not the best one you just need to uh, log out from the controller as i show you over here or you can use the online and log out and then remove the usb say see if i forget about something do, 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 do. i'll really show you this when we see this message you need to be careful to read it okay not as i done really carefully and then you need to press alt f to this the combination and then you should be able to log into the controller so i show you and then in this case i i didn't have any application on the controller so if we go to details you should probably see this no current application i probably step out the process and i didn't enter in this detail but i show you this part and then do, 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 do. okay you remember have this part over here so basically okay so once you're trying to log in into the controller okay if it's empty you should be able to see this message okay but if you're trying to download again the application then uh you have different messages like this so if we go back here to the application i'm going to make some small changes over here uh, uh let's see the change don't pay attention to the code we're going to see that later so i'm going to add those changes on this on that PUU okay and I'm going to log in again to the controller okay using the S uh, the USB cable so as I am trying to log in again to the controller now there is an application on the controller okay there is something there so we have different possibilities we have login with online change that would only affect one part of the application that we have in the M262 and two four one and two five one, we have a RAM, okay, and a non-volatile area. So, if we download this, it will into the online change. It will download the application into the RAM. But as soon as we uh, power cycle the equipment, okay, the RAM will be disappear and will be banished by the code that we had in the in the EEPROM of the non-volatile area, okay, which is done with the login we download that it will update the boot application okay so i'm going to only online change so i can show you what i want to show you so here i online so if i we are going to cover that later but just want to show you uh you'll see gbl here plc underscore r i'm sure you see different boot application so in order to sort that out we just need to go online create a boot application which should be the same as the download and create boot application and then here you should be able to see in the plc underscore valid boot project so you can guarantee that the next time you download the application okay it's not the online change it's the application that's going to have in the controller so next time you power cycle the controller we're going to have the latest application that you have otherwise it will have something that you have in the past so that is something that you need to be careful about so it's so important to mark this one update both application 
when it's done log out and there we go so uh, you probably have these messages and create the communication failed to initialize so probably in that case we just need to uncheck this encrypted communication that will sort it out the issue they may have the other problem will be this one is most of the common problems so um you have an application in your site okay so you're trying to log in to the controller but it doesn't allow you because you have a mismatch and probably it's not a mismatch of the reference of the exact m262 is the problem of the firmware so you will need to change the firmware as i showed in the previous videos okay so bear in mind these numbers over here pi zero that should be here okay so let's see if i forget something connect to the usb there's done check the configuration okay Log in the controller, download the application, and log out. So we have already covered all the things that I want to show you so far. Okay, how to connect to the M262 using the USB cable, how to download the program, and how to validate that the application should be in there. Okay, uh, this is just the login uh, and download your application. Okay, is the this doesn't cover right now the source code that we're going to cover that later okay so this is the actual application the binary code for the control so thank you very much for watching this video and i see you on the next one